if you clicked on this video, it's probably for one of three reasons. One, you wanna know what horrible thing I did to lose my monetization on YouTube after working so hard? Two, you wanna learn what not to do so you can continue your monetization and continue getting paid. And three, you're here for a good time and not a long time and I welcome you in as well, okay? Hi, my name is Brittany or B. I'm a lifestyle creator on my healing journey, unlearning people pleasing tendencies and traits and also living life with PCOS. Did I mention I'm starting over at 30? We got a lot going on here. <laughs> I'm here to share my journey as I become a better version of myself in hopes of helping somebody else that's on a similar journey or just need some inspo. So, or if you're just here for the vibes, that's cool too. <laughs> so I know the big question is how did I lose my monetization? To fully answer this question, I think we need a little background. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about my journey and how I became a YouTube partner in the first place and I promise it won't take long. But yes, I created my channel in 2016 and the theme was beauty on a budget back when it was the OG beauty guru time on YouTube and people were looking at you weird for starting a youtube channel i started my youtube channel back then <laughs> and that's 2024 that's a whole eight years it's crazy i posted pretty consistently uh, dude, i was uh, in college and i didn't have no money but i still wanted to be popping you know what i'm saying so the thing was more so beauty on the budget i did rig reviews and also beauty and i was learning how to do makeup and stuff at the time with doing those videos and being consistent i was able to actually hit the youtube monetization requirements and apply to be a youtube partner in 2018. So what did I have to do to become a YouTube partner? Let's just go through it really quick, really quick. I know a lot of y'all may know, but it may be some people that do not know what you need to become a YouTube partner. <laughs> so one, you need a thousand subscribers. I feel like recently, more people struggle with the getting the subscribers part than the watch hours, to be honest, from what I've seen. With me, I'm struggling. I already have over a thousand subscribers, so it's really the watch hours now. You have to have a thousand subscribers to even apply. They have made like tiers where it's different like levels of the partner monetization, little smaller things that you can do with less than a thousand. That's why you've been seeing those videos where it's like, I'm YouTube partner or monetized with less than a thousand subscribers. It's because they're kind of tiers, but to get like the AdSense and things like that, you have to fulfill these. <laughs> so you need 4,000 watch hours. 4,000 watch hours. <laughs> So realistically, I feel like a lot of people have one viral video and it puts them up there with the watch hours. But when you really think about how much 4,000 watch hours is, 4,000 hours? Girl, I made a mistake and calculated that and I just sent myself into a whole spiral. I'm not doing that ever again. So yeah, you need 4,000 watch hours, but in a 12 month period. So when I first became a YouTube partner, I didn't realize it was in a period. I thought it was like, boom, you know how on Twitch, once you get Twitch partner, I don't think they take it away unless you have some kind of violation. But basically you need to have the 75 concurrent, I think, viewers or something like that. I haven't heard people really say their partner, their Twitch partner has been taken away for any reason or anything like that. I thought it was like that, but it's not. Also, you have to have be in compliance with YouTube's guidelines, rules and guidelines, no copyright. I feel like copyright is the biggest thing for everybody on YouTube. Don't get no copyright strikes, they will be your demise. <laughs> as well as the AdSense account. So when you do get monetized, you have to have a Google AdSense account. You get paid off of the ads that run on your videos. So in order to connect that to an account, to your account, you need an AdSense account. It's really easy to set up. It's not hard at all. Those are the four things you need to be eligible for a YouTube partner. They do have people who, once you apply, you can apply through YouTube, through your YouTube account. And they do have people that review your account and if they find anything that doesn't align with what they want, then they could just still deny you even if you are you meet the eligibility requirements. I think that's why they word it that way where it's like you're eligible but that doesn't mean you're gonna automatically be put in there. So with that, we're gonna go on to, okay, I applied for YouTube Partner and I was approved and now I'm a partner. Like how do I maintain my monetization on YouTube? How do you maintain it? Cause that's very important. Cause doing all that work just to lose it, it's crazy. It's crazy is crazy i felt that that's how i feel right now things like not using copyrighted content and engaging in like spammy behaviors spamming or scamming people things like that i feel like usually when someone's channel gets taken down it's for a big reason i've seen a couple content creators who are like i woke up my channel was gone and that was crazy but a lot of them have usually gotten it back because they proved that they didn't violate anything but it is scary that they can happen that way number two and this number two is the reason i lost my monetization it says 
and I'm gonna read this right from the website um, where it says, stay active to keep making money. As the YouTube Partner Program continues to grow, it's important to maintain a healthy, active ecosystem of channels. To focus our support for creators who are active and engaged with the community, we may turn off monetization on channels that haven't uploaded a video or posted the community tab for six months or more. So essentially, six, to me, six months is not that long. But essentially, you cannot just go ghost for longer than six months. And they followed up with saying, what happens if I drop below the monetization threshold? YouTube will not automatically remove your channel's access to monetization if it drops below the threshold. However, YouTube does reserve the right at its discretion to remove monetization from channels if a channel is inactive and not uploading or posting community posts for six months or more. So y'all know the mental health breaks? We don't really have time for that on YouTube. So if you're gonna take one, it need to be a couple months. <laughs> Maybe two. Or batch create before, because YouTube not playing with us. Channels will lose monetization if they violate any of the YouTube channel monetization policies as well. Regardless of their subscriber count, public watch hours or public shorts views. It says, what happens if I lose access to monetization? If it's determined that your channel is no longer eligible to monetize, to monetize, your channel will lose access to all monetization tools and associated features. And then basically you can free apply once you meet it again. So for me, I had a really, um, I lost my monetization, let me see. In September 2018, my application to be a YouTube partner was approved. So that was two years after I started my channel. And then in July 2022, I lost my eligibility. Um, YouTube did send me an email I put on there. It was like, you haven't, it, it basically said I fell below the requirements for eligibility. And if I didn't hit them in 30 days, they were going to take it down. I'm like, how am I going to hit this in 30 days? Like. If I need 300, if I need 3,000 watch hours or something, 30 days, you would think they gave you like 60, 90. Mine said 30. This was in 2022. So at that point, I was like, I was going through a really, really tough season, to be honest. Like, the reason I lost my monetization is because, one, <laughs> I was, I got promoted at work and I started working like 50 to 60 hours a week. Every week. I didn't have time to shoot content. And then my mom got really sick at the same time so i really just stepped away and stopped making content because youtube videos are very time consuming i'm not gonna hold y'all so for me i stepped away and then after that i had a really bad breakup so i've really been going through it for like three years <laughs> like back to back to back to back so that's also why when i came back i'm like we're doing lifestyle healing and just being better versions of ourselves because that's what i want to focus on right now the one that I have on my channel from 20 was 2021, August 2021. But I know during 2022, I posted them, but I look back. Y'all look back at y'all channel, y'all be like, I'm deleting that. Yeah. So I had only made maybe like one or two videos in 2022. So it did fall in that, like I hadn't posted six months, like threshold. It's just that at the time, I didn't realize that that was a thing because I feel like a lot of times I see big channels with a lot of following a lot of youtubers take like years and years off like they used to back in the day and they would just come back and they would still have ads and stuff like that so i don't know if this is like a newer thing they added or what but this is my first time like really seeing it when it happened to me so i mean a lot of other people i saw lost their monetization was because they were doing some wild stuff on youtube so i was really shocked i didn't know about that um do i regret it no because i life was really kicking my ass like i can't really do nothing about that <laughs> Honestly, my personal opinion is is more so about watch hours. I feel like they're not really being like, oh, you haven't posted in six months. I feel like they're like, oh, you haven't had a substantial amount of watch hours because I really doubt that they're going to channels and being like six months in one day and like taking it down. I really doubt they're doing it. I think because my channel, because I did have a video that went pretty viral. It was about like a passion twist and that was seeing views, I want to say through like while I wasn't posting that video was still getting views and when that video started to scale down I didn't get the monetization issue until that video scaled down so I really do feel like it's about watch hour and watch time versus like oh your post was six months ago if anybody see anything different let me know but I think it's that so I do realize I'm like okay well that will make sense as to why some of these bigger channels take more than six months off but they come back because their videos are still getting views by their fans and stuff like that versus if you're smaller you're it's harder for you to be discoverable and like 
you really have to push your content. That's my opinion on what is really happening with people and why we don't see the bigger channels lose their monetization when they take these really long breaks. <laughs> Cause I'm like, I've seen people take years off and come back with the ads, with the ads, with the ads. So yeah, I have a line chart. I'm gonna add it um, because it was this video got 16,000 views, which is a lot for my small channel to be honest. I haven't, yeah, you know whatever um and it peaked in 2020 but through 2020 through 2021 um towards the end of 2021 it went down let me take this screenshot real quick and i feel like that one that's really what was carrying my channel while i was away in a couple other videos i do have other videos that have decent views essentially after that i took another year off so it's two years later and I'm back trying to get my monetization. But all I did was take a break. Life happens and sometimes you just need time away. And the amount of time that you have to spend and dedicate to YouTube, if you have a job that's very demanding or other things, I, I also have a small business. I also do marketing services. There's other things that I do. So at the time I needed money and YouTube wasn't really, do, wasn't that girl for me. So yeah, there was a lot going on and that's why I lost my monetization. Cause I stopped posting and didn't get enough watch hours in the 12 months because i think that's i really think that's why they say 4,000 hours in the 12 months getting views I just, it's a lot of questions one i want to see somebody who consistently got views all throughout the years and they still lost their monetization and i also want to see somebody who didn't post for over six months and didn't lose it because their watch i think it's the watch time so yeah that's really all i thank you guys so much for watching this video i hope this helps somebody i'm gonna edit in the resources and the links and things that i use to reference on here and then if there's anything i've missed i'll edit it in with my editing b head now we're in 2024 i'm back being consistent we're doing our lifestyle healing girly era and if you're interested in that make sure you hit the subscribe button thank you so much for watching this video i'm so happy you guys came here and i hope that this video can help somebody else just in case you think about taking that break and you're a little scared about it i would just suggest batching or at least posting every couple months just in case if you don't want to like lose it because baby getting these 4,000 watch hours is kicking my butt. But in the meantime, if you're interested in what I be doing in my life and what my new content is looking like, I'll tag some content somewhere <laughs> here and you can click this and keep on watching.